Hello everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games, and welcome back to 80 Days. We are on day 12, Saturday, and we've got still a little over 2,000 pounds left. We're here in Istanbul. Fog kind of likes us, at least he's got a high number there. Though he does treat us with contempt. Uh, here I'm Silk, should fetch a good price in high L if we decide to sell them. Why don't we explore here before we plan on leaving? Oh, that maybe was a good idea? I found myself in the historic quarter of the Sultanahmet, in the shadow of the glorious minarets of the Blue Mosque. I had some hours before I had to return to Monsieur Fogg, and was finding myself attracting some entertaining attention in my flashing silks. Oh, wait, am I still dressed like a woman? Oh, this might have been a bad idea. Let's go to the Grand Bazaar. A covered market holding thousands upon thousands of stalls divided into streets of vendors selling everything from Turkish leather slippers to dried fruits and nut sacks. Suck my nut sacks. Classy. Maybe that's why Fogg judges me because I say things like that. Uh, nut sacks and precarious pyramids. Vendors called out in every language known to man, and I'd wager some entirely invented. Um, let us skirt the edge of it. I skirted the edge of it, only to encounter a yet more busy group. A mob was gathering on a street corner. We're protesting the Sultan's so-called modernization! A young medical school student told me breathlessly. That seems like a dangerous pastime to me. I declared, indeed! What are modern institutions without liberty? The time of absolute monarchy is over, sister! I'm dressed like a woman. I don't know why I didn't change into my normal clothes before I went walking around the city. I pulled my veil ever more securely around my face as the crowd surged forward, shouting slogans in Arabic and English, and even some well-worn phrases stolen directly from the French Revolution. Well, I'm going to feel quite at home then with the French Revolution part, as our character is French, and took up the chance... No! What the hell, Passport A? Oh my god, I'm stupid. I'm... Our character is dressed like a woman yelling out revolutionary slogans in, in the Ottoman Empire. Man, our boss is right to judge us. I felt quite at home and took up the chance as we made our way to the sublime port, the physical representation of the authority of the Ottoman rule. As one, a hundred voices shouted the forbidden word Mashi Ruti Yat, constitutional monarchy. The Janissaries, loyal Pelscars, began shouting and shoving into the street. The young medical student cursed and pointed down a side street. Um, I'm going to let him lead the way. And soon enough, we were sitting at a nearby cafe, thronged with young, modern-minded men and women. Cool, maybe we'll score with some hippie chicks. Sipping coffee and discussing politics. Um, I was still wearing silks. I think that's why I'm just like a woman, so preferring to complex negotiation between veil and coffee cup. Uh, wait, what is it? Istanbul is not safe for those who seek liberty. He told me seriously, I am escaping to Beirut tonight by hot air balloon. The pilot is sympathetic to our cause. We would be, You would be welcome to join us, sister. I don't know how I would explain that to Fog. But no, um, I will consider it, but I am not going to sit. I'll think about it, thanks. No, we want to go to Tehran. Uh, can I pause this? No. Alright, let's go to Tehran. The railway's un man, uh, man's uniform could show results to negotiate. No charge? Hell yeah! We're gonna embark. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of money for the extra suitcases. We have harem silks? Um. Alright, we will pay for that too. Oh, look at that horse. He's like, woo, I'm a horse. A gigantic iron horse reared from the prow of the Istanbul Tehran Express, billowing gouts of steam from his nostrils. The Tamir Taj was awesome. Not wasteful, distinctly Ottoman in design. I would ride a train that looked like that. That looks cool, don't it? But where even the most luxurious European trains sacrificed weight for efficiency, it was a matter of some pride that the Tamir Taj's engines used a carefully guarded new Persian design supposedly capable of achieving a top speed of 75 miles per hour? How you like me now, Fog? I'm going to get us there fast. 
Truly, we live... Uh, this could tap, tip the balance of power? No, the Ottoman Empire is going to collapse. Truly, we live in an age of wonder. Unimaginable to our ancestors, ever since I came into Monsieur Fogg's employ, I had experienced more than my share of marvels. Some DC, too. And as the Tamir Ka uh, Taj pulled out of the station, I resolved to savor each and every one. This train is so cool! Let's talk to... Ooh, who's this? Greetings, a hard ghoul! Good evening to you, Macha. Can you tell me about Tehran to Kabul? Ah, uh, you mentioned trains. I have been told I knew a man who always wanted to travel aboard the Trans-Siberian Express from Karameshavka to Vladis... Vladivska... Why can't I not pronounce the Russian word? Um... What about Kabul to Delhi? That would matter. I'm told that Kabul is connected to Delhi. No right here, but some buyers will pay well for geometric equipment from Delhi. That does not help me. I want to figure out how to get to Delhi, my friend. How about from Delhi to Lahore? My good man, you can pick up saffron crocuses in Lahore that will sell for a fortune in Hong Kong. Am I in Hong Kong? Do you know anything about Delhi? What about Lahore? What can you tell me about Lahore? Well, some buyers will pay well. Yes. If I recite English poetry, will you like more? Milk, milk, lemonade. This is where the fudge is made. Are you a fan of poetry? Oh, why, yes, that was good. I need to know about Tehran. There's got to be summer from Tehran. I am told the Prime Minister is a good inf influence on the young Shah. The Persian alliance with the Ottoman Empire is proving fruitful. How about Tehran to Hayil? That's where we can sell our silks for a lot. Can you travel from Tehran to Hayil? Seems unlikely to me. But I need, I need to get there. To the Bandar Abbas? I believe so. One can fly aboard the little beetle from Tehran to Bandar Abbas. I don't even know where I'm supposed to be going. All right, let's uh, move the map. Where's that hell eel place? Oh, that's way down here. That would be way out of our way to go there. That being said, those silks are worth a lot of money there. Do we? Oh, I don't know. Do we side trip there? The first day was short because of our evening departure, so we had just about enough time to secure the compartment and... Well, our master seems like he's happy. Observe our fellow passengers. A six-set janissary from the Turkish Guard and a striking red-headed woman who traveled without a veil. I want to hit that woman up. Uh, both were settled under their seats. I eyes them closely, so they did not appear to open conversation. Thus, I... Uh... I'm not going to pick their pockets. I'm not Sparrowson. I let them be and rested myself. Our character is not a crook. He's a lot of things, but he's not a crook. Uh-oh. Our master is a little less happy. Let us talk to him. What is your wish, master? Pass a party? Uh, well, our, our wager, do you think it'll be successful? Day 12, as I am sure you are aware. Our journey continues. I know. And how are you feeling, monsieur? I am in roaring health, but we must make haste. Or is that his health? I thought it was his love. Very good. We're doing our best. I should have just sold those silks. I'm going to be like at a wash because I paid the extra for this stuff. Because I didn't know where... I Because I paid the extra for the luggage on the train. I didn't know where Ha'il was. With another long day of foggish calm beckoning, I fell into conversation with the red-haired woman... Eager to talk of engines and gauges and driver diameters. I don't know about her diameter, if you know what I mean. She told me her name was uh, Ksenia Petrovna Volkova. Oh, a Russian chick. She might be able to tell us how to get across Russia. I want to ask her about the, uh, ask her about the train, the Kamertage. Oh, that's a real mystery, is it not? She laughed. <laughs> and then gave me a challenging look. Do you believe the Persians have a revolutionary engine? I think they would like us to believe in it, I said thoughtfully. It all seems very political, does it not? Uh, Kanzania lifted one eyebrow. Everything is political. She told me seriously before talk shifted to the lighter matters. Our relations with Fog have improved. Probably because I didn't come back with a dumb story. I, was, I probably didn't come back and be like, I pooped on her. What do I do now? Let us manicure, Mr. Fogg. Uh, Starch collar, indeed very good. There you go, sir. The Khmer Taj stopped for five hours at the Iranian border while various uniformed inspectors scrutinized our papers and peered into our faces. Uh-oh. Intriguingly, uh, Kenzia was nowhere to be found. Is she a Russian spy for the Tsar? During this 
uh, bureaucratic inspection and only reappeared in our compartment as the Tamir Taj, Kamir Taj, started to pull away beyond the border station. I love this train. He's like, woo, with his hands up. Woo, I'm doing it. Woo, woo. I kept, I'm going to keep watching uh, the chick who excused herself to go to the convenience uh, after a look at her pocket watch, I followed her. Despite Monsieur Fogg's raised eyebrow, my curiosity, I admit, rode my politeness. But Mardi! When I arrived, the conveniences were empty. Interesting. Uh, my suspicions confirmed I went searching. The Khmer Taj was bristling with uniformed guards who grew more unfriendly as I approached the front of the train. Two tacticurned fellows blocked the entrance to the engine car. No doubt guarding the new secret designs from prying eyes. Um, just then I saw a flash of red outside and hurried to the window. To my shock, Kenzia was hanging from the side of the train. She is a spy. She looked at, at me through wind goggles and lifted an arm to wave. No, don't wave! The last time someone waved at me, they fell off of the thing. Um, I'm going to gesture at her to grab back on before she falls off. Hold on, dumb bitch! I did not want this lady's death in my conscience. As I watched, she determinedly began to sucker her way towards the engine car. Um, I was confounded but impressed by her mad daring, and I stumbled back to my compartment in days. It was at least an hour before Kenzie had appeared. Cheeks ruddy, but otherwise not a hair out of place. You look flush, madame. I wasn't going to narc on her to the cops. I ain't no narc. I remarked. Oh, you flatter me, monsieur. She returned with all the vapidity of a country debutante. Ah, yes. I tried valiantly to penetrate her laughing facade, but all too soon the Khmer Taj pulled into the Tehran station. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, the red-haired adventurer said disappeared. Aw. By the time I gathered up our bags, or by that time I had gathered up our bags, but by then I was too entranced by the sights and smells of the ancient city of Tehran, capital of the Kingdom of Iran. Fog is not happy with me. He's like, why weren't you combing my mustache this whole time? I had things to do, bro. Ah, uh, there seems to be no departures today. We should explore a bit. Alright, let's go to the market first. We can get a pressure gauge. That's a part of the engineer's set. Portable pressure gauge, good for diagnosing problems with steam systems. An astrolabe. Worth a lot in Benares. And wool shirts. Oh, I sold his pants! I sold his pants! Because I didn't think we'd run into that. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, are we going to Benares, though? Let's sell the silks, because we're not going to that other place. Let's look at planning. Oh, we should do this at night. Alright, let's, let's explore, then at night we will plan. To say the capital of the Persian Empire is modern would be to deny the unparalleled glory of its ancient monument and palaces. Yet, a beyonder class airships hummed in the sky. Interesting. Like scimitar moons and mechanical palaquins adorned the enamel when gold work carried officials. Poets and lovers up and down the gaslit avenue. The Kajar Shahs ruled over the empire almost constantly at war. Though you would not know it. As I walked the streets, I felt safer than I might along the banks of the sign. The Seine. Insane in the membrane. Insane. Got no brain. I'm doing it every time. Just like an aviary attorney. The city itself is a garden of culture and art, protected from the skirmishes along its border. I sat in the cafes with poets as they dueled each other with words. Uh oh, it'd be better with swords. Ah, ah, suck it, poet. And competed for patronage. Let us go to the bank. My master leapt to his feet. Perhaps this place's bank will supply us with funds in good time. I regard the bank as we entered. Blah, blah, blah. Would you like to take out funds? We would like a thousand pounds tomorrow. We're going to be here tomorrow. The manager nodded. I have communicated with London first, of course. He apologized. I should have a reply tomorrow. It seems, Monsieur Fogg remarked as we left, we have time to dispose of. All right, so tomorrow we go to the bank. I don't know if we really need to buy anything else. We'll sell the evening jacket. Let's buy the astrolabe. And then... Where was that? Benares? I don't even know where that is. 
Oh, right there! If we follow this route, we could go to Menares and sell that for a lot of money. People love astrolabes in Benares. And in fact, we probably wouldn't need, I wouldn't think, any more money at that case, because that's a ton of money. So we want to go to Lahore. Uh, oh wait, no, I, I, we want to go to Kabul. Or Herat? No, I want to go to, can we just go to Kabul? Uh, I think this departure could be adjusted. The railway man's uniform should result. No charge in two days. No charge tomorrow. I don't know when our bank stuff is going to come in. Let's go with no charge tomorrow. It's a good thing we got that bank thing. Or not the bank thing, the railway uniform. Well, Monsieur Fogg, why don't we just luxuriously lay by the lovely hotel? We'll pass the night here. Of course we will, my friend. I wandered the streets one more. Look, he loves us. The poets and musicians retreated as night fell. Why don't we seek out some engineers? And found them in the cafes, drinking heavily, sweetened coffee, and racing their inventions across tabletops. I shat, I mean, I sat with the shard engravers as they took turns to scratch minute symbols on a piece of colored glass. Is that a device, my friend? They smiled and lifted the shard, turning it this way and that in the gaslight. Um... Uh, this is an automaton brain. It will be once it's complete. Interesting. But surely it is impossibly complex. Uh, details certainly. Oh, that's a woman. Details certainly, one woman replied. Uh, this is true. A young bearded man agreed, eyes bright behind his jeweler's lope. Uh, the artificers only allow uh, those with the steadiest hands to become engravers. Are you all artificers here? I asked with interest. We are, but that is hardly enough to qualify us to make uh, autom automata. A middle-aged man by the name of Rafiki, Rafik, remarked. But, uh, wait, that is exactly what the guild certifies, I replied, surprised by his words. In other cultures, Rafik continued derisively, a copper lily may be enough for an artificer to complete their education, but we all appreciate, or a prince, apprentice, sorry. Oh. To other guilds and craftsmen, to truly make automata, we must be jewelers, architects, shipwrights, cobblers, doctors, and dancers. Are you human or are you dancers? What does dancing have to do with artificing? Rafik's eyes flash. What if you desire to engineer a mechanical capable of grace? Where better to look than the smooth movements of a dancer's limbs? Uh, you sure you're not a poet too? Uh, and I'm a dancer too, Rafik winked. And we clinked our coffee glasses together. Someone further in called out to to the Shashashana. And we all raised our cups. In some way, got in. May he live forever under the watchful eye of the Prime Minister. And everybody laughed. Oh. And this is my abiding memory of Tehran. A place where people could be both right and humane. All at the same time. A rare thing in this world of ours. It is the city, I'm sure, that will stand forever. Well, that's a really general sweeping statement. Well, everybody, that's the episode. We're doing pretty decent. I feel like I'm having fun. We've made it all the way to Tehran. If we can get to that place, what is it, Benares, we can sell the astrolabe for a ton of loot. And we should have a thousand pounds in the morning. And as long as the schedule is right, hopefully the train doesn't leave before the bank opens. Because I want to hit the bank and then the train, because we don't have to pay, pay for travel, because we got the railway man's uniform. Pretty sweet. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.